Hey guys, good to see everybody again. This here is the brand new Air Venturi Avenger. And today I'm going to get you through what it is, then I'm gonna share with you what I've learned about it over the last two weeks, and then I'm going to teach you how to tune it. So this is probably a good time in the video to hit pause and go grab yourself something to take some notes with. Also, I suspect that this video is going to get in front of a lot of new viewers. So if you are new around here, this is not my primary YouTube channel. AEAC Vlog is a secondary channel to the Airgun Exploration and Advancement channel, also known as AEAC Home. It's over on that other channel that you will get full reviews of the products that come through here. And this channel is more of a first person classroom where we can drill down on some discovery and approach. Also, you can hit me up on Instagram, Hooked on Air, or Facebook, AEAC, Airgun Exploration and Advancement Channel, Hooked on Air, any of those three should hit it. Uh, and of course, I have a website, aecaonline.com, if you want to see what's inbound, arrived, and in the bullpen for review. Okay, so what is the Air Venturi Avenger, and why is there so much buzz about it? Well, at its core, this is a pre-charged pneumatic air gun with an externally adjustable regulator, with an externally adjustable hammer spring adjuster, and a 4,351 PSI tube for just 300 bucks. Now this one came to me by way of Air Venturi. The gun is manufactured in China. It's available in 17722 and 25. This one here is a 22. It measures about 42 and three quarter inches long. It is a total featherweight. It comes in at just six pounds by itself, filled with air. Once I added a scope, mounts, and the aftermarket moderator you see here, it weighed in at a flat eight pounds. Okay, so here in 22 form, I know a lot of you guys have been asking after following on Instagram, Facebook, and Airgun Nation too. There's Airgun Nation forum as well. There's a big topic sticky there on the gun. Uh, power, okay? At the high end, I'm getting about 42 foot pounds with the 22 cal. And I suspect that the same is possible for the 25 because I think they share the same guts. So that can be important to, uh, to your buying decision. A couple of you guys maybe that lived in Canada or the UK were concerned with lowering the foot pounds. I saw as low as 500 feet per second with a 16 grain, which I think is 10 ish foot pounds. And I wasn't at the bottom. So you can go lower than that if, if you so desire. So that's kind of the range. All right. Not to get too much ahead, but the shot charts I'm going to share with you. Um, are a 42 foot pound shot chart or tune, if you will, a 30 foot pound tune and a 25 foot pound tune. I kind of dubbed them power tune, pro tune, and eco tune. On that power tune, I'm getting about 50 shots at 42 foot pounds on the reg. On that pro tune, I'm getting about 95 shots uh, at 30 foot pounds on the reg. And on that eco tune, I'm getting about 115 shots at about 25 foot pounds on the reg. And we're talking with extreme spreads here in the neighborhood of 20 feet per second and standard deviations in the neighborhood of five. So more than plenty good for work out to 50 and 100 yards. And because it's so adjustable and because of the price point, I think that's what's freaking everybody out. And that's one of the reasons why I gave it a full two weeks of learning before I got in front of you here on the camera for, for the vlog. So this is gonna be a ton of information. I got a bunch of it swirling around in my mind. So if I hop around a little bit, I'll apologize in, in advance and uh, hopefully uh, I, won't, uh, I won't miss anything, all right? So let me just start up at the tip here. Uh, the gun is shrouded, okay? There are no types of internal baffles in here, so you know, when you get into the 42 foot pound range, it gets pretty thumpy with its report. It's not so bad around 20, 25 foot pounds, but um, 
there are aftermarket solutions if you do want to quiet the gun now gun down now it's by no means as loud as like a, a 22 short or a 22 rimfire or an unbaffled or excuse me an unmoderated air gun it's not loud but it definitely does not fall into the quiet <laughs> category all right now at this time don efl is uh, making adapters one half inch unf thread adapters that will thread right into the end of the moderator he sent me one and that's how I was able to affix this uh, zero DB. These are available at Air Guns of Arizona and maybe a couple of other uh, places. They come in different lengths. And uh, speaking of length, you'll notice right here underneath the moderator, this is the uh, cap for refilling the gun. And there's a little bit of a clearance issue. So as I pull that cap off, you'll notice how close it is to the moderator. So at this time, you probably don't want to go with a moderator that has a diameter of more than an inch and a quarter. Otherwise, you're just going to have to leave this cap off or, um, or take the moderator on and off every time you refill the gun. And uh, if you do that, you could get into POI changes, but um, that's not a, uh, not a, not a certainty. Um, as I also understand it, Donnie may be coming up with an adapter to put a little bit of an extension on here to give you guys some clearance over over uh, over that foster fill but this does a great job of quieting the gun down all right so this tube here um there's a tube here it's kind of connected to a secondary tube inside together their combined volume is just 180 cc's and the reason they're getting so much so many shots out of this gun is uh is because of that super high working pressure you know most air guns are a, a 3000 psi fill ish kind of live in that neighborhood this one lives at 4351 psi for x max fill pressure so what that means to you is if you are able to get that high for example if you have an aftermarket um, compressor like an air venturi nomad or a spark or you know one of these little guys you know, you can fill your gun up to that if you have an SCBA tank, which is what's very common in the air gun industry to refill your gun from. It's what the firemen wear on their back. You know, those are 4,500 PSI fill tanks. Um, so, you know, that would be very good for filling, uh, filling this as well. Now, if, you, if you're a hand pumper, okay, and you want to pump this up, I mean... There are several affordable hand pumps out there by Air Venturi and Crossman. Um, there are also some more expensive ones that will fill to 4,350 PSI, but that gets super tough. So um, that's gonna take a special dedicated individual that's gonna wanna work that pump that hard to fill this thing to its max, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a good ownership experience with this gun. If you use a regular hand pump and fill it to say 3,000 or 3,500 PSI, just kind of figure you're going to get about half-ish to 40%-ish of the available shot count that this gun has to offer. That 50, that 95, that 115 that I talked about on those three tunes, which is still extraordinary for just 300 bucks and all this gun has to offer. Okay. A couple of you have been asking me on social media if I would if I would also come up with a hand pumpers tune, and I think to do that um, would really detract from to do that specifically would really detract from all of this gun all that this gun has to offer because you know to to get down below twenty foot pounds you know just so that you can get seventy shots as opposed to fifty. I mean, to me, that doesn't make any sense because then the tool becomes less useful. You want to be in that 25 foot pounds ish range to have a docile, accurate, fun gun for shooting at longer distances or higher 30 or 42 or 43 foot pounds as I was able to ring out of uh, ring out of this guy. OK, um, kind of moving on down here and I'm also going to show you how to remove the shroud so that you can get to the barrel for cleaning. So if that's important to you, I'll have that in here as well. Okay, the um, the stock is plastic, all right? And so as you heard when I picked it up, you know, just kind of managing everybody's expectations, you know, um, doesn't bother me. Some of y'all seem sensitive to that. 
it's a nice stock with really good ergonomics. It's really narrow. It fits the hand well. The balance with the bipod is right about here. It's a little bit further back when you don't have a bipod on here. All right. Speaking of the bipod, if you are going to own this gun, I'm going to strongly suggest you pick one up. This is an AccuTac. This is very expensive. You don't have to have this. There are more affordable options out there. This one came from uh, Utah Air Guns. Um, but built into the bottom of the Avenger is a little Weaver Picatinny uh, rail to mount a bipod to. The reason I'm highly recommending a bipod for this gun, which is not something I always do, is because of how narrow it is, and because of how light it is, and because of how slick, and because of how slick the plastic is on this gun. Those three things are not your friend in the moment when, um, when you're trying to shoot a gun from a bag. They get top heavy, you know, um, they get a little bit slick and move around on the bag. But I did all of my accuracy testing, which I'm going to share with you here, uh, and all of my culling with this bipod on. So you can get a lot of performance out of the gun via the bipod. Um, but if you're going to hunt with the gun, then you just pull it all off and go out in the field and hunt with it. Because like I said, you're six pounds alone, eight pounds with a scope and mounts. So uh, this ought to make a fantastic, uh, fantastic hunter. I also noticed a couple of your comments on social media over the last two weeks is that you felt that for the price point, this, this would be a really good basher type of gun, you know, back of the pickup truck, you know, beat it up, doesn't matter because it's inexpensive. I, if that's you guys, I would encourage you to try to maybe look at this differently than that. And the reason I say that is after having spent two weeks with it, this is more of a it's kind of a freak of nature in that it's kind of, it's a precision air gun in regards to um, how it feels to tune, shoot, and kind of handle. So I wouldn't put it in the basher category. It doesn't mean that it's like not tough. I mean, who knows if it's going to be tough. They're brand new, right? But it doesn't feel like, you know, something that you can just beat around. It's more of a precision tool. So don't let that 300 bucks fool you. Um, I, I don't know any other way to say it other than to just say it. I came away from my two, two weeks completely blown away with, uh, with what this is and all it has to offer the, uh, the end, uh, end user. All right. Um, kind of moving on down here. Uh, there's a, um, a Weaver Picatinny scope rail up here at the top. It's all poly. It's kind of all molded in. It works just fine. I haven't had any issues with it. You'll see a, a pressure gauge over on this side, and then you'll see a pressure gauge over here on this side. The one on the left side of the gun is going to tell you the readout of how many PSI, how, how many PSI, how much air is left in the system. Okay, it goes up to a maximum of 4,351, which is 300 bar. Okay. The gauge on this side tells you what pressure your regulator is operating at. All right, if you're new to air gunning, your regulator controls how much air the valve of the air gun sees. So that is a great tuning tool in moving your power band up or down and increasing and decreasing that, that shot count. With more shots, uh, excuse me, with more power comes less shots or less efficiency. Okay, with less power, you get to string that out. Okay, I would also encourage you guys because this is just a six pound gun, and I run into this with the FX guns as well because they are so darn light. Overpowering your gun is not always your friend um, when it comes to ultralight guns because they tend to get flippy and bucky on the bags, bipods, <clears throat> excuse me, in the hands. In my experience, 22 cows really kind of like to live in that 25 foot pound range. They'll do well in 30, 30 foot pounds, but when you start getting up into 40, 45, 50 out of a 22 cow, they can get pretty bucky at, uh, at this weight. So what makes it a great field gun can be a detractor um, when you're trying to do like a prairie work or bag work or bipod work. So just something to keep in mind as a blanket when, um, when you're tuning. All right. 
This over here on the side of the gun, this is, a, this is how you cock it. It's a side lever cocking gun. I'm going to shut up for a second and just let you listen to it without the creaking in the plastic up here. <laughs> okay, you noticed how smooth that was and how the effort was very minimal. All right, so there's that. And this is in the $300 price point, and that is not common um, in this price point. It's just not. It's the only way to say that. Normally there's grit there, it's really heavy. Um, not normally, normally that can happen has been my experience and it tends to smoothen out as you get a lot of shots through the gun speaking of that i've got about 3,000 shots through this gun in two weeks and so far it's purring like a kitten all right but the side lever cocking is it's um it's it's first rate guys <laughs> you're not far off the big boys <laughs> with this one, so that was kind of mind-blowing. Also keep in mind that as you tune your gun for more power, this gets heavier. So those three tunes I was talking about, that power tune, that pro tune, that eco tune, uh, this is the pro tune that you're experiencing now from my culling session yesterday. And um, But when you get into the eco tune, this just gets like stupid light. And, it's, uh, and it just makes the gun that much more enjoyable to shoot because you've got a really fluid, light cocking stroke, a really settled gun as far as its flip, and things just get, uh, just get crazy easy and enjoyable. It really enhances the ownership experience, if, uh, if that makes sense. Safety is manual, okay, which means it doesn't auto-reset each time you cock the gun. It's right here. It's light, it's precise, and it feels expensive. All right, so there's a lot of good things going for this. All right, in the slot here, the gun, at least my gun, there was about 20 that went out to a bunch of the content creators. Speaking of that, if you're waiting for this, I called uh, Pyramid Air this morning, excuse me, Air Venturi this morning, and the first batch is supposed to arrive next week. It was held up in customs, that's what all the delay was about, but now it's on the move again. It got through customs and it'll be, be at uh, Pyramid soon. So what that means to you guys is it'll be shipping soon. And uh, there's another big batch right behind it because of how long that first batch took to kind of get through all of the minutia. Uh, the 177s are sold out, not because it's the most popular, but because fewer of them were made. There's plenty of 22 and 25 left at this time. Um, a couple of the other reviewers are reviewing 25s. I requested the 22. Uh, specifically because of the weight of the gun, I had a suspicion that the 2.5 and 2.2 were going to make the same amount of power because typically in this price point, they don't revalve, retransfer port, and respring the gun across those different calibers. You know, it's a cost saving thing at the manufacturing level. And, and, and it, 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 it looks like that hunch is turning out to be right. So, rung out, you're about 40, 43 foot pounds with either. And if that's the case for long range work, I'm going to be favoring a 22 in close. If you need that extra stopping power, probably a 25. It's really just totally up to you. This is my per personal preference. And we'll get into more of why that is. Sorry, guys, I got an eyelash that's very itchy. Make a wish, right? Okay. Uh, trigger. <laughs> um, it's good. It broke it, uh, it broke it about two pounds out of the box. The, uh, the owner's manual that ships with the gun is, it's exemplary. Okay, it takes you through how to adjust the trigger. There's three adjustment screws on it. This kind of freaked me out, all right? This is something that you don't see really at all. It's very rare, but there, you can actually access all three adjustment screws through the molded in plastic trigger guard, in case of any of you are working. The, uh, the trigger feels like it's metal. And that's a great thing. So you don't have to take the stock off to make adjustments, all right? Um, that being said, it came from the manufacturer adjusted darn close to ideal. Of those three adjustment screws, two of them were maxed out, which means it's giving you really the best brake weight that it can as far as sear engagement and all of these types of things. The screw in the middle, I think, is hooked to some kind of like tensioner spring that gives you kind of an overall. And as you remove that screw counterclockwise, 
um, it tends to lighten the break. But it also hit a point of diminishing return for me. Also, as I pull the trigger kind of up, it breaks at a lighter weight than when I pull it straight back. I'm not sure why that is. I've also noticed that with some of the Quattro triggers through Hatsan. This one's kind of, uh, kind of the same deal here. I'll demonstrate it for you. There's the first stage. It's resettable. Boing, boing, boing. Comes up against that nice, nice stop. It's super light. And with just a little bit of creep to work through, it breaks at about two pounds out of the box. Now, by finessing that middle screw, I forget how many turns it was, but I started going clockwise about a quarter turn at a, at a time. And I was able to get that down really close to a pound. I think it was like one pound, four ounces, three, four, five, six ounces, something like that. So the trigger is better than good. It's better than very good. It's pretty darn great. If I could have gotten that little creep before it actually breaks out of it, if I was able to tune that out, which I was not, I mean, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going with match grade as far as what I'm, what, I'm, uh, what I'm calling it. All right, so how do you adjust the hammer spring? Well, it's super easy. Right here in the back of the stock, you'll see a little hole. You insert an Allen in there, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. You got about five and a half total turns of adjustment. So all of our references today will be made from screwed all the way out or counterclockwise to number of turns in to achieve that desired hammer spring that I'm gonna share with you in these four different shot charts, okay? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty, oh, I do wanna mention, mine had, um, as I worked through those five and a half rotations, had a couple of super stiff spots towards the middle uh, that made me think I was at the end when I was in fact not. That's why I have 3,000 shots to this gun because I kind of had to redo all of the shot charts. So don't get fooled by that like I was. If you get to a hard spot and you're in that screw all the way to the left and you're not five or so turns all the way to the right, you know, you've probably hit one of those hard patches. As I understand it, I'm the only guy that has those hard patches. The rest are kind of smooth operating, but that's the way it goes for 300 bucks, right? All right, that externally adjustable regulator. So by the way, that's kind of a big deal, that externally adjustable hammer spring. That's going to allow you to fine tune velocity and power and dial in these charts as I'm going to share with you here in a minute. All right, on the bottom of the gun, you'll see an Allen right here, which is for purging the air in the air tube. It doesn't take much, maybe a quarter of a turn to half a turn. Counterclockwise opens it up to purge all the air from the air tube. You need to purge the air from the air tube if you are going to decrease regulator pressure. Write that down so that you don't damage your regulator, okay? That's in the owner's manual from the manufacturer, all right? To increase regulator pressure, it doesn't matter. Fill the tube up all the way. That's what I've actually been doing on purpose so that that regulator sees all the pressure on the other side of it, on the tube side, when I'm making my adjustments because I noticed that if I did not do that, um, the, the regulator, I would kind of get it into an area and then it would settle over 10 shots and then I need to you know, just add a little bit more reg, which is not a big deal, but be aware of it. This little screw here is how you adjust that externally adjustable regulator. It's just a flat head, it turns very easily. When there's no load, it turns like, like it's just spinning in its place when it's under pressure. It's a little stiff, but it's not bad. The range of adjustability is not huge. A turn, turn and a half-ish to work from like 1200 PSI on that reg on all the way up close to 3000. And I found that it was very responsive, um, which kind of surprised me. And what I mean by that is little inputs on that, on that regulator screw showed little differences on the regulator gauge here. And, um, and I really appreciated that because what that enabled me to do is really fine tune some extraordinary performance out of, uh, out of this gun. And then it's got this, just this little rubber plug. So I said it once, I'll say it again. I don't want anybody to hurt their gun. If you're going to increase, or excuse me, if you're going to decrease your regulator pressure, first purge all of the air out of the tube by that little purge screw. 
Okay, then fill it. I'm gonna demonstrate all this for you later, so don't worry. <laughs> and then fill it up with air, all right? And, um, excuse me, purge all the air out of the air tube. Turn that regulator screw clockwise, gently, until it seats, all right? Back it out a quarter turn. That's kind of your starting place. That's gonna be sub 1,000 PSI on the reg. And you wanna get probably into at least that 1,200, 1,300 PSI range. You know, and kind of start going from there, all right? But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all that. Uh, there's a rubber butt pad on the end. I, it's got like a string. Oh, I, so this is obviously for a sling stud. It looks like it's drilled for the diameter to put a sling stud in there. And one right up here on the back side of the um, of the weaver mount for a, for this uh, bipod. You know, you can also put like a laser or a flashlight on that bad boy for nighttime nighttime hunting. Um, I think the only other thing I want to share with you um, before we get into all of this craziness down here is mine shipped with two magazines. I'm guessing that they all will. One was great and the other was not so great. So one inserted with a click, the other did not. Um, one, and I'll be able to tell here, yeah, this one. So even, if, even though I eclipsed that little, we'll call it a nipple, right there. You know, a little, it doesn't hold, it wants to come back. And this is the same one that just kind of fell in like butter. So this is the one I've got like 3,000 shots through. It goes in with a nice snap. I can spin this all around here and it holds in its place. So I don't know if this one just needs a little tightening on that Allen, it may, but it was something worth mentioning, All right? Uh, 10 shot in 22. I don't know what the 177 and 25 are. You guys will have to look that up. Also comes with a metal single shot tray, All right? It's really nice, kind of, um, it's got the designated caliber on the side, which is kind of cool, nice detail. Just drops into place. That being said, I did not need this or any slug or any pellet, except I will say that the H&N Hornet, the Predator Poly Mags, they did not fit in the magazine. But all of these slugs and all of these crazy pellets did to include these sniper magnums and the rabbit magnums and the pile drivers. And, uh, and we'll, get into, uh, we'll get into all that. So I never actually used or had a need to use that single shot tray, but it's nice that it, uh, it's nice that it came with the gun. If you don't run a moderator, it's fine. Accuracy is phenomenal. Performance is there. Like I said, it's just got a little bit of a bark to it. This is the plastic plug that threads into the front of the shroud. I measured it. It's nine millimeter. And I think the barrel sits probably about here. Okay. And then this sits up in here like so. So this, um, this adapter from Donny FL fits super loose in this shroud for some reason. I actually sent him, um, I, I got two guns. I sent him one of these and, um, and he's doing some due diligence probably to come up with something tighter. If you've bought one of his early ones, I just wrapped it in uh, Teflon tape, okay? And the reason I got two guns is I had a, a little bit of a leaky issue with the first one. So it is what it is, but uh, there's that. This one's been great for 3,000 shots so far, so, uh, so go figure. Um, I think that that's kind of the gun, guys. Up here on this top, I'm running a, a Hawk. This is their Vantage uh, WASFIR. WA stands for wide angle. It's lens for the magnification and bell size gives you about a 21% wider field of view. It's been phenomenal. It's done exactly what I've told it to do. Been able to get on paper and dialed in without adjustable scope mounts at 25 yards, no problem. Um, and uh, I'll have more of a full review of the scope over on, uh, the full review over on AEAC Home, more through, through all this. As you can see, I'm riding pretty darn close to the shroud with that 50 millimeter bell which is a good thing, and, uh, and that's using Sports Match T079 uh, twist-off mounts, okay? Twisting these on is all you need for a poly receiver like this. If, um, if you wanna go a little bit uh, further with a screwdriver, you can, just don't go too crazy. It's not needed. I had, had success both ways, and, uh, and all is well. 
All right, I'm trying to think um, if I want to get into ammo first, tuning first, or how to get to that barrel. I think I'll do the barrel piece at the very end so that you can see everything kind of put, uh, put together. All right, so you probably want to know how it performed out of the box, All right? It's basically good for 33 foot pounds and 22 by about 90 shots out of the box. Reg pressure was set to 2600 PSI and I was about 2.75 turns in on that hammer spring adjuster um, when I backed it out to see where, where I was. Now that all being said, I want to give you another blanket statement. I purposely did all my tunes stopping at quarter turns and they still came out pretty darn phenomenal. So this is not the end all be all. There's still plenty of fiddling and fine tuning for you guys to do if you pick one up and use these tunes as kind of a, kind of a guide. But 32 foot per second extreme spread by uh, 87 shots. You can actually look at the bottom of the graph. It actually falls off towards 89. Um, so you're about 87 good shots with a standard deviation of 6.4. It's good for 50 and 100 yard work as it, uh, as it came tuned. Um, that's filling to 4,350 PSI. So you hand pumpers figure maybe 40% of that if you go to 3,000-ish. Something like that with the OEM tune out of, out of the box. What was interesting to me about this tune, and there's a little story behind this that I'll share with you, is like I said, this owner's manual is super good. And it has a really good tuning guide in it that kind of tells you how to set it up for 177225 as far as your reg pressure and where to kind of start with your hammer spring. It tells you the same thing for hammer spring. It tells you basically go to the middle each time, three turns and go from there. But it asks in 177, it says set the reg up at 2000 PSI for 2.2, 2600, 2.5, 2900. And so that kind of led me to believe that this gun was going to want to live in that 2600 to 2900 PSI range to make it the best gun that it can be. And so I spent a lot of time learning and tuning there. And as it turns out, that's not the case. <laughs> All right. And we'll get into that. But long story short, I did all that due diligence. If you go over to the Airgun Nation forum or you follow me on social media, you'll see some shot charts that were put up and with my tunes and how I got there. And, um, oh, by the way, you're about 900 foot per second average with an 18 grain. So scooting, right? But if you go over to the Airgun Nation forum, you see like a first round of tunes that I put up and, uh, and I called Air Venturi and I kind of told them where I was at and Tyler Patner, Pyramid Air's insider, if y'all don't know, he's the product manager over Air Venturi. So he's kind of the guy at the helm of this project. This is his baby right here. So it's got a lot of expertise behind it. And, and Tyler, he says to me, he says, Steve, he goes, I was playing around with a 22 yesterday. He goes, try, try setting the reg pressure to something like stupid low. And just, just tell me what happens. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, just, just do it and, and, and do your thing and, and let me know what you find out. So I did that, all right? And I came up with this, uh, this eco tune. So I dropped the reg pressure all the way to 1400 PSI, which is below 177 recommendation of 2000 PSI, all right? I backed way off of that hammer spring just a turn and a half on the hammer spring. All right, I threw a 16 grain in there. All right, so this is gonna be a really good tune for your Hades, your Diablo, or excuse me, your Air Arm 16 grain, your JSB 1589, your Crossman Premier stuff, which is all 14 grains-ish. And if you wanna get into Barracuda Greens and Predator GTOs, which are 11, 12 grain-ish, if I remember, in 22 and like your h and terminator here which is a 16 grain you know this is a really good tune for all this doesn't mean you can't use it on an 18 grain but i probably wouldn't go too much higher otherwise you'll start to get you know a lot of this but ran it from 4350 psi down to 1400 right where it fell off the reg that was the reg setting a turn and a half in to the right from all the way to the left setting counterclockwise to clockwise and I got 116 shots. You ready for this? 
with an extreme spread of 22 and a standard deviation of 4.8. That's a 25 foot pound average with a 16 grain repeated 116 times on one fill. And what was so cool about this tune is it made this cocking just like super butter light. The gun really calmed down at 25 foot pounds. You know, that a lot of that flip went away that I was experiencing because it is so light and you'll get more flip without a moderator. And it just got super enjoyable. Uh, not that the power tune wasn't fun, but we'll get into that. And so if you're on the hand pump, I would recommend pushing a 16 grain to the 840 or so feet per second that this will do on this eco tune. And that by itself, guys, is kind of mind blowing. I won't put that any other way, but just look at that. You know, so if you're on the pump, I'd guess 40, 50% of that on the, on the hand pump. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to hit the accuracy at the end. All right, so 840 feet per second, by the way, guys, is also a number that I kind of chose for that eco tune. I was trying to dial that in because that's a velocity that the Diablo shaped pellet does really, really well at. Um, they don't like being pushed too much more than 900 feet per second. If you do, you tend to start getting instability at 50 and 100 yards, and you'll see that, and you'll be frustrated and wondering why your gun won't group. Yes, it'll do better in the wind going faster typically, so it's a balancing game. But uh, typically 850 to 870 is kind of the magic window for that style of pellet, you know, with like the little parachute on the back, as opposed to like a slug or a football. And, uh, and we will get into, uh, get into that. So that's just something to be aware of. That's a good place to live for any air gun at any price point, um, shooting any Diablo-shaped pellet. So... Um, that's a tune that applying and knowing will really enhance your ownership experience. All right, the Pro Tune. Why do I call it the Pro Tune? So, if you get friendly with the guys that are winning Extreme Bench Rest, the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, Pyramid Air Cup, you know, there's a misconception out there that these guys are shooting 900, 950 feet per second, 1,000 feet per second, all these crazy numbers with pellets. And that's just not the case. And also, when you start talking to our industry's elite air gun manufacturers, they'll give you the same information, okay? That Diablo-shaped pellet is happiest uh, traveling at about 850-ish to 880, 70, 80 feet per second-ish. You'll get your greatest stability and accuracy there. If you're shooting at 50 and 100, if you're at 25, 30, 35 yards, doesn't freaking matter normally. You can get away with 950-ish and you're still going to be inside of a nickel, you know, at 25 with a lot of different types of pellets. But the reason I'm going over all this is, like I said, I suspect that this video is going to get in front of a lot of new, new air gunners. And I don't want you guys and gals to get misled by what you read on a box at a bo on an air gun box at a box store. 1,000 feet per second, 1,500 feet per second. Guys, I'm here to tell you that is not your friend. That is marketing designed to get in your wallet and they are banking on the fact that you don't know any better, okay? Now that was kind of harsh, right? Or maybe they're just assuming that maximum power is important to you at 25 yards and if that's the case, that's okay. Eh, nothing wrong with that. And then you would, I would just retract everything I said. But these are things for you to be aware of as a new air gunner. High velocity with a pellet that is shaped like a parachute is not your friend. 750 to 850 is where you typically want that. So that's how I came up with this Pro Tune. The guys that are winning big money at these national events are pushing pellets 850, 860, 870. Okay, and they're winding up on the podium finish. So that's what I modeled my Pro Tune around. It pushes an 18 grain pellet to about 860 feet per second by 96 times on this tune, right? 4,350 to 1,800 PSI, max fill to where it falls off the reg. Reg is set at 1,800 PSI. 
2.75 turns in or clockwise on the hammer spring from an all the way backed out position. By the way, be gentle with this, guys. There's no reason to force. Kind of go backwards until it stops. Don't be cranking on it. Same thing with uh, forward. If you feel a rough patch, just I'm doing everything with a uh, with this so that I'm not hurting this. All right, and we'll get into we'll get into that. All right, but the Pro Tune. This is a 30 foot pound of energy tune with an 18 grain. That's perfect, Ville, for a 22 cal. All right, you're you're kind of pushing. You're kind of pushing flip and stability and harmony at 30 foot pounds. You know, it's not as tranquil as the 25, but you're also going to have a little bit more oomph to combat the wind, flatten you out a little bit when you're trying to go longer distances. These are all things that will help you as a shooter. So if I'm owning this gun, this is probably where I'm going to live unless I want to get into slugs and, and, uh, and some of these football projectiles over here, which we'll get into in a moment, all right? Freaky stuff, extreme spread, 21 feet per second across 96 shots. And we're talking $300 price point here, all right? 4.8 foot per second standard deviation across all of those shots. So we've got efficiency, we've got power, we've got balance, we've got harmony, and we've got a tune that will shoot 18 grains very well, 860, 870. If you want to downgrade, not downgrade, down weight to a 16 grain on this tune, 910 ish, still in the realm of very doable at 30, 35, 40 yards. May or may not be good at 50, may or may not be good at 100. You just got to see if the barrel likes the combo. Okay, so this is your bread and butter tune. This is how I'd recommend setting the gun up if you want to, uh, if, uh, if you're going to be an owner. All right, just really, really cool stuff here. All right. Okay, the power tune, what everybody wants. All right, so I spent a lot of hours ringing the gun out, trying different combos, and about 43 foot-pounds is the most I could get out of it with any combination of reg and, um, uh, with any combination of reg and hammer spring setting, and that's with a 25 grain projectile. And I noticed in watching some of the other creators' videos um, who were shooting 25 cals, they're 25 cals shooting 25 grains, which is also available in a 22, 870, 875. And so I would love to see your feedback in the comments as time progresses, how you're doing with your 25 cal. I strongly suspect that uh, it's kind of the same as far as the power that it has to give, all right? 42, 43 foot pounds and a 22 is a ton, all right? That's way more than you need to humanely hunt small game out to 50 and 100 yards. And we'll get the lab radar on this uh, in the full review over on the big channel. And we'll see how much, we'll see with how much energy and velocity these projectiles are hitting with at 50 and 100. If you're new here, that's Doppler radar. We use it to track the speed of the pellet all the way from Mr. Muzzle all the way to the target. It's really some cool, fun stuff. You'll see it later on here in this video as I start sharing with you some very specific accuracy and velocity, which I uh, I promise I will do. All right, the power tune, 2,700 PSI on the reg, five and a half turns in on the hammer spring, which means I, I closed that hammer spring to put as much pressure on that valve to open it as the gun was able to, to give. All right, and you notice I didn't max out the reg, 2,700 PSI. I got that same power at 27, 28, 29, and 3,000 PSI on the reg, no matter what I did here. So that tells me that the power limit of the gun is being governed by the, the spring, the ability of the spring to exude force, and also the valving in the, in the gun. All right, uh, 50 shots with a 42 foot pound averaging, with a 42 foot pound average, averaging 870 feet per second with a 25.39 grain pellet. I actually used the JSB redesign. All right, this is where it gets really freaky. Extreme spread of 17 feet per second and standard deviation of 4.6 for 50 reg shots. Guys, that's a six pound $300 
cannon with some extraordinary consistency. Just calling a spade a spade. Uh, uh, you know, Air Venturi, my hat's off to you guys. Um, this is really good stuff. And I think it's going to mean a lot to, uh, to, uh, to a lot of people. But, um, yeah, those are, uh, those are the tunes, guys. I, uh, I, I, I would use those as kind of your base. And then when you receive the gun from ownership, fine tune from there because you may find even better than, uh, than I found, all right? Because uh, I'm sure you're gonna invest a lot more time as an owner. Um, let's get into accuracy because there's a story within a story there. So the barrel is the first, that, first of its kind that I've ever experienced, all right? Not that it's made in China, but it's not crowned. Okay, and what that teaches me as an avid air gunner who's been teaching this for a couple of years now to you guys is a crown may not be as important as we think it is. I know there's a million stories out there where you're like, oh, my gun shot like shit and then I recrowned it and then it shot good. And I'm starting to suspect that that may have more to do with a poor crown being on the gun rather than no crown at all. I don't know, but that's kind of where my mind went with that because this non-crowned barrel performed at a very high level with everything that you see here. And that's super, super weird. It's very unusual in air gun land. Usually a barrel will like three or four or five different types of pellets, maybe 10. Granted, we're talking a 25 yard call, but I gotta know where I'm at with the gun at 25 yards before I move out to 50 and 100. I gotta get all those pellets down to something manageable. I was not successful in getting that to something manageable because this gun likes all of this different lead at all of these different tunes. So it's just like, holy crap, man. So it's probably gonna take me another week or two to film that full review at 50 and 100 yards as I figure out what actually has stability at what power and speed at those longer distances. And that'll be in that full review for you guys. So take this with a grain of salt, but I will also say that my 25 yard culling work has always been a strong indicator for me of what will work at 50, all right, uh, and beyond. Let's start, uh, let's start with the light stuff. So with, um, with that EcoTune, all right, had great success. And I'm gonna, I have to go through this with a cadence to where I can put up on the screen um, for you guys to see the group and the speed at which it was traveling. Hence that notepad I wanted you guys to grab earlier. It's gonna be a ton of information, all right? JSB Hades, okay, love that EcoTune at, uh, at 25 yards, this is gonna be a really good hunting pellet for y'all. Good combo between speed, power, and, uh, and expansion, all right? Your breaded butter pellets for that, uh, the EcoTune is going to be your Air Arm 16 grain or your JSB 1589. If you're new to air gunning, these are actually manufactured by JSB. What sets them aside is they have their own dye within the JSB plant in the Czech Republic that's used exclusively for manufacturing air arms pellets. If you haven't seen it, I've done a full factory tour of the JSB manufacturing facility in the Czech Republic. Highly recommend you check it out over on the other channel. All right. Crossman stuff. Um, I don't normally test the Crossman pellets because what I've always found is that I'll get consistency or I'll, or I'll, or I'll, I'll find a barrel that falls in love with their stuff but it's always four out of five times or seven out of 10 times. So while that's great because this is very inexpensive and very budget um, and it's fine for 30, 35 yard work, once you start stretching out past that, that those, those four out of five, seven out of 10 of it flying the way it's supposed to fly just because of the inconsistency in manufacturing because it's less expensive, right? That's fair, um, can bite you. Right, but this uh, uh, I did really well with the domes and with these copper plated domes. What do they call them? Uh, I have no idea. They're a copper plated dome 14.4 grains, 14.3 grains. 
It's, this is basically just this with some copper on it. I tried the cross from Premier, Premier Hollow Points. I didn't like them. All right. Terminators. This can be a really good pellet. It's nasty as far as hunting goes. It has kind of a fat, flat face on it, so it scrubs speed pretty quick. It's good for kind of in-close work, typically. Um, they're lighter, 16 grains, so they tend to really zip. This gun liked them. I don't want to say loved them. It liked them. Okay. And again, everything was through, fed through the magazine. Right. By the way, feeding... Um, is, was very was awesome with everything that being said I do want to share with you guys I'm not sure how well this is gonna pick up but you see this, this the probe right here it's not perfectly in line with um, with the breech right here I don't know how much it matters but you'll see it it's here here it is all the way out put my face here because this camera is I've got it set to focus on my face it's all the way out and then as it goes in it kind of angles down as it guides. It didn't really mess with like the way it felt at all, but I can see that over time um, moving through these O-rings faster than it might if it wasn't otherwise perfectly aligned. All right. Again, we're in the $300 price point, right? So I want to manage expectations. A lot of good things going on here, but these are also things you need to know as an ownership to keep an eye out for. This is not a big deal. You just want to keep some of these O-rings on hand because it may go through them quicker than if there was a perfect alignment right uh, right there. All right. Okay, Protune. Protune for me revolved around the 18 grain again at 860, 870 because that's where you want to be for all that speed and velocity. It's good power, 30 foot-pounds. Okay. The tune you see here was done with the JSB 18.13 grain. Performed very well at 25 yards. Okay. This gun really, really liked the Barracuda uh, 21 grain. And um, if, if this is the pellet you want to shoot, I would probably tune up a little bit to try to get that speed up. And it may not like it. Maybe it did so well because it was shooting at that really docile velocity. You know, not that 900-ish, that 850-ish. But you know, you could try these with a little bit more oomph because this barrel absolutely, um, absolutely loved them. Pellet on pellet, okay? Pretty much the same thing for the Sniper Magnums. This is an H&N pellet that's 18 grains that tends to, tends to do well in barrels that the JSB 18 grain likes. And I feel like a lot of people still don't know about this. This pellet is a total stud. Uh, did very well, okay? The gun did pretty good with the Barracuda Hunter and the Barracuda Hunter Extreme. I don't know if there's more accuracy to be found there. If, uh, if you do some fine tuning with velocity, there may, may not be. I will also share with you all of these accuracy pictures that I'm putting up on the screen here for you. Guys, this was done with like thousands of rounds through this barrel, not on a fresh clean. So for me, this is one of those barrels that performs very well, pretty mucked up. Where some, if you're new, like to be clean, some like to be dirty, some like to be in between. That's your work to do as, as the owner of your gun. But it did pretty good with these guys. Um, on the Pro Tune, again, you might want to experiment with, uh, with velocity because, you know, you're 18 here and you're about 20 grains over here. All right. And of course, the Air Arms 18 grain is the JSB 18.13 manufactured in the Czech Republic with its own die. A gun that likes these may not always like these, and the one that likes these may not always like these, vice versa. You really got to own them both. This one did fine with them both. All right, so, so that's kind of an oddity in and of itself. You know, this is a very forgiving, very forgiving barrel. A lot of these barrels can be fussy in air guns. This one, this one is not. All right, stand by. I'm getting a little thirsty here. Oh, <clears throat> and so that I guess I don't have to answer the comment because I know a couple of you will ask why it looks like I'm drinking water out of the Mississippi. That's not what this is. This is uh, this is just my breakfast. It's blueberries, strawberries, a banana, carrot, um, walnuts, whey protein. 
yogurt, coconut, oil, quinoa, basically all thrown in the Vitamix. <clears throat> Excuse me. It liquidated. That thing will liquidate your left shoe if you wanted to and you can drink it, but that's what that's all about. All right, so here's where things get, you know, if they, if they haven't been extraordinary enough with everything I've shared with you, this is where they get stupid extraordinary. So our industry, as of the last year, let's say, has really kind of taken a turn and started to march down a path of getting into a better ballistics coefficient, a better ballistics result when it comes to ammunition. And it's starting to move over towards air gun slugs. And the advantage to the slug is they do significantly better in the wind, regardless of speed. You do not have to push a slug to a thousand feet per second. If you watch me over on the other channel, AAC Home, we've shown you where you can get great stability and accuracy out at 50 and 100 yards at 750 feet per second with a slug. Oddly enough, they sometimes do just as well at 1,020 feet per second at 50 yards. That's a slug. It doesn't have that parachute on the back. It either has a boat tail or something kind of flat. And you get a much more slippery ballistic coefficient. It travels faster further, which means you're transferring more energy downrange. And um, they get a lot more slippery in the wind, which means when you have a crosswind or a headwind or a tailwind, you don't see so much movement as you do with a Diablo-shaped uh, pellet, right? So this oddity of a barrel absolutely loved air gun slugs and a couple of pellets that I've never gotten anything to like ever, all right, on that 42, 43-foot-pound protune, all right? And, uh, and we'll just go through them, and I'll put the group pictures up. I'll put the speeds up so that you can get a feel for, uh, for where you're at. This is all the Nielsen specialty ammo stuff in the back. Nick Nielsen, NSA, hey, uh, fantastic slug manufacturer, guys. Just got a huge variety of high quality stuff for air guns. All right, let's start down here. Whoops, on the lightweight end. 17 and a half grain slug, so lighter than the 18 or the 18 grain pellet, right? Absolutely cooking. Did great at 25 yards. And the funny thing about slugs, guys is they tend to carry the same or more stability as they move out. So, you know, typically you would think that you would have a bigger group at 50 than you would 25, or bigger at 100 than you would 50. Slugs, they don't have the same wobble in their, in their gait as Diablo-shaped pellets do. So a lot of times I'll shoot like a nickel-sized group at 25 yards, and the same thing will happen for me at 50. All right, so something for you, uh, for you guys, uh, newcomers with slugs, okay? It liked these 20.2 grain 216s. I don't know if Nick has these available to the public yet because he scribbled sample on the box here for me, but this barrel liked them, all right? The 23 grain 216, okay? Same story, cooking. Absolutely did fine at 25 yards. Suggests that there might be there something there for you at 50. All right. 23 grain, 217. So the barrel likes 216s and 217s, and it's not crowned. That's not normal. Normally, an air gun barrel will like one or the other, but not both. Nor you know, maybe when I get out to 50, I'll discover that it likes the 216 or 217. Right, but normally at 25 yards, I'm seeing significant di differences that will tell a tale for what I'm about to see at uh, at 50. All right, now we're 24.8 grains. Right, so we're we're getting up to the weight of these JSB redesigned pellets, which is what this Power Tune shot chart was made with. All right, did just fine with them. So now we're transferring a little bit more energy downrange because we've got some more weight to go with it. All right. That's a lot of different slugs from one manufacturer to a, for a barrel to like that, um, that also like pellets, okay? You just normally see one or the other. We, we do see anomalies. The Hatsan Neutron Star comes to mind. Um, 
the Ed Gun Matador did well, the Air Arms did well. So I guess we're starting to see some of the Lothar, Walther and Turkish made hot song barrels do well, but the Chinese have figured it out and then some, all right? FX hybrids, you guys see all these over social media. These are rat snipers. Uh, FX has worked very closely to come up with them. This is a differently designed type of slug. It's a 22 grain, which is nice. It's a little bit lighter weight. You get a, bit, a little bit more speed out of it. This barrel is showing a tendency to like them, all right? Altaros. So this name may be new to you. Um, they may be more synonymous to you with regulators. They come out of the Czech Republic. Um, if you are familiar with the Predator Polymag and the Metal Mag and the Polymag Short, all right, these guys are the ones that put those little ballistic tips on those pellets that JSB makes in the JSB manufacturing facility in the Czech Republic. So they're friends, if you haven't figured it out. All right, um, I, I suspect these slugs or, or boat tails are going to be available uh, in the United States because they reached out to me and they're sending me product now and they're going to start funneling product to me through JSB. And what makes this ammo special is that every one of these boat tails is turned on a CNC machine. It doesn't go through the typical manufacturing process that you guys will see. Um, if you look at my H&N Sport Germany and JSB Czech Republic manufacturing tour videos over on AEAC, AEAC Home. So it's different. It gives them an extraordinary level of control. They sent me a 548, a 549, a 550. You're looking at the picture of what that did now. The gun's favoring the 5.48. That's a 31 grain football right there. So you talk about delivering some energy. This barrel loves them. These are new to me. This is the first barrel I've found that likes these so far. I think I'm going to be getting some larger sizes from these guys. They've indicated it to me. Uh, 5'1", 5'2", 5'3", hopefully. Um, and so we'll just see what happens. But, uh, you know, for what it's worth down the road, there you go. All right. H&N came out with its Slug HP a while back last year. This is not the Grizzly. This is completely different. I've had success with these in Lothar Walther barrels. I've had success with these in Hudson barrels. I've had success with these in FX barrels. And now I've had success with these in Avenger barrels. Okay. These specifically, for some reason, shoot well between 750 and 900 feet per second. They fly very well slow. Don't know why, but that's been my experience in those videos. If you want to see them, the other channel you guys can see for yourself. They're heavy, 27 grains. One's a, a 217 and 18, if I remember. Yep, 217, 218. I, I, it's kind of hard to tell at 50 what it liked, or excuse me, at 25, but I'll just have to back it out to 50 and see. Nonetheless, the barrel showed a propensity to liking them. The new JSB knockout, it is finally here, 25 grains. Whoa. Barrel loved them. Pellet on pellet at 25, and you're hurling those 25 grains, which is the exact weight that this shot chart was made in. However, there seems to be, it's either more friction in the barrel with this, or it doesn't seal in the barrel as well as this boat tail or uh, parachute you see on the Diablo shaped pellet. So velocity is less than this. Something to be mindful of, you know, ringing the gun out for maximum power. Okay. That all being said, the most power I got out of this gun is from the JSB Exact Diablo redesign. It's a Diablo styled pellet with a modified skirt on the back. It's kind of a Excuse me, it's kind of a hybrid. It was extraordinarily accurate. It delivered the most power. I sus strongly suspect this is going to be one of the final pellets that make it into the full review at 50 and 100 yards. Over the coming weeks, the gun absolutely it sounded really good. You can tell when a gun likes something, it'll have a sound to it. It just sounds settled. So here's where things get go from extraordinary to extraordinarily weird. So all these guns that come through, I do all of this culling and never in all my days have I had anything work with the H&M pile driver, 
and the H&N Rabbit Magnum Power. And this monstrosity actually loved both of these things at 25 yards. This thing's a beast, 26 grains. This one's 30 grains. So you're lobbing them in there. I think because they're heavier, they're not moving as fast. Sometimes you need the muscle to get the power out of them. I think you're 40 foot pounds-ish. I can't remember, but you can look at the screen and do the math and, uh, and see where you're at. So, you know, when, when you look at all that, guys, I mean, what else is there to be said? You know, the proof is kind of in the pudding as far as what you're able to do with the gun to get it to work with all of this type of lead to suit your specific needs as an air gunner for 300 bones, man, and it's fun. I had every bit as much fun tuning this thing because it's easy and it's responsive and it does what you tell it to do as I have um, you know, some other guns that I've done tuning guides for. By the way, we all need to thank Air Venturi for, for um, having me do a tuning guide for this gun. It was a lot of extra time, and it's a lot of extra, um, it's a lot of extra effort. We'll call it effort on their behalf. And uh, but but man, was it worth it! All right, so let's get into how specifically to tune the gun. Let me just show you that one time so you guys can see it. Make myself a little bit of room here. Let me grab a bag. You'll need some tools. You're going to need a flathead screwdriver, smallish like that. You're going to need a three millimeter Allen to purge the air. Uh, this two mil, this is for getting the shroud off. And uh, this, uh, yeah, the two mils for getting the shroud off. I'll show you that in a little bit. And you're going to need a two and a half mil for the, uh, the hammer spring. I took a silver Sharpie and I marked mine right there. That way you can count the turns specifically as you go. All right, and again, I would start it at the quarter turn here. That'll get you really close to a, really close to ideal. All right. So my my air tube down here has it's got about 3,000 psi of air in it, and I need to purge that from the system. If I, I need to purge that from the system, if I want to decrease my regulator pressure, we've been over that. You don't have to do any purging at all to be clear to adjust the hammer spring. You can go up or down with that at will. Just don't do it on a cocked gun. Make sure the gun is decocked because when you cock the gun, you compress that spring and now you're trying to turn on that bad boy and you're wondering why it's not. Don't cock the gun, all right, when, um, when you do that. All right, so if I want to go, like let's say, for, for example, right now my regulator pressure is at the pro tune, so it's at 1800 PSI, right? Let's say I want to move up to this 2700 PSI here and and, uh, and get up on the uh, on the power tune. The first thing, not the first thing, if, so all I'm gonna do is take Mr. Screwdriver here. Can you guys tell I'm getting tired? <laughs> I'm also starving. It's early in the morning here on Tuesday. You take the screwdriver here, you insert it. Come on, find find your home. You insert it in, in the regulator adjustment screw and you make little bitty turns and you do it slowly. All right, so I'm just gonna shut up and do this. You probably aren't gonna hear anything, but maybe you might. Uh, I'll show it to you. We're on 1800 PSI now. There we go. And let's say we're gonna try to move that up to 2700 PSI. I'm gonna to start to move this counterclockwise slowly. Okay, and I'm at about 2,500 PSI now, as you can see it on here, all right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot this. I've gone, I've moved up, what, four or 500 PSI? And, if I were tuning the gun, I'd actually be doing this every time I made an adjustment that I wanted to stop at. Dry fire this gun at least five times to help that regulator kind of settle into place. You're going to want to do the same thing when you make hammer spring adjustments. It's going to take five or so shots, could take 10, 
for everything to kind of settle into a place where it's going to stay for you. Okay, and if I look at that, that settled, it settled back down to about 2200 PSI, right? Now that's making me realize something that I shared with you guys earlier that's important to do. Okay, you want kind of a lot of air in here when you make these adjustments. I don't know why, but for some reason I found it helps with that regulator stability where it doesn't wander around so much after you've made the adjustment. I think it, I think it, I suspect it just helps it kind of settle, settle into a, into place here. That whistling you hear is normal. It's the air moving past the check valve up here in the front. Some guns may do this, some may not. So if yours does it, not a big deal. If it doesn't, great, you won the lottery. You won the, the check valve lottery. All right, so there's 300 bar or 4,251 PSI. The tank, by the way, comes from Air Guns of Arizona. It's the Omega brand of tank. This bag you see it in is really cool. It also comes from AOA. It's got a little flat spot on the bottom, a little pouch over here on the side for your, your uh, foster and a little bag on the other side. All right. Let's see if that adjust, if that, if that extra air changed where the regulator is at. No, not really. All right. So let's continue to work that upwards. Magnifying glass might not be a bad idea for some of you old dudes. I was actually looking at this, um, blowing it up with my phone to see where I was at. All right, I'm gonna shoot that. 5 times and yeah, it settled right down to about 2700 PSI or so on that reg. Maybe a little bit lower. But that's the idea of how you adjust that regulator pressure up you increase it and if you're new to all this this is a really tough thing to explain but your regulator regulates the amount of air that your valve sees your valve controls how much air gets behind that pellet so more air is more speed right more air is more power with a heavier pellet right so when you increase your regulator pressure okay it becomes harder for that valve to open into that body of high pressure. So as you come up with your regulator pressure, you normally need to come up with your valve by screwing it in to create more tension on that hammer spring so that when it, when it goes off, you have more force opening into that volume of air. You typically work them up together and you typically work them down together. And you'll find these like little nugget sweet spots of harmony as you go up or down where the gun really likes to live. And you'll hear that. You'll hear that in your tuning. So the name of the game is not to go as high as you can on the regulator pressure and as high as you can on the hammer spring and think you're going to get the most out of the gun. That's simply not how it works. It even kind of fooled me, a guy who knows how to tune for a little while because I was going off of this that was telling me I'm going to want 2600 to 2900 PSI on the regulator for a 22 when the reality is I'm, I'm really wanting 1400 to 1800 is ideal and if for some reason I need full burn with big heavy lead over here then I'm going to move that up to 2700 ish. Your experience may vary from that a little bit but that's kind of where mine, uh, mine wound up being. All right so just kind of keep that in mind the the more pressure you have on that reg that hammer spring needs more assistance to overcome that pressure to open and close into it otherwise what happens you have a high pressure over here and you have a soft spring over here a couple of things happen the valve doesn't open completely because it can't move all the way into that body of air and back um, or it moves too quickly to allow the air past it and to get behind your pellet so those are the things that you're balancing out Right, so now let's say I'm up here on this power tune. I've made my adjustments. You know, um, I suppose I could show you this once. Where's my screwdriver? Just slick this in the back here, and you start turning it to the right, or you start turning it to the left, and you count. Move it all the way to the left and start counting in. That's how you get to these. Uh, that's how you get to these different uh, different charts. All right, so let's say now I want to move back down to my 
1400, 1800 PSI rank. I've got to purge the air from the system before I do that so I don't damage it. The way we do that is with our three millimeter. All right, we put insert it in here, half turn, or excuse me, quarter turn to start and no more. And you're probably not going to hear me be able to speak after I do this because it's going to get loud. And you got to get all the air out of the, out of the tube here. And then I'll show you how to reset that regulator to its minimum so you can slowly start to work up from there. Do not, do not dry fire the gun to get the air out of the tube, okay? I don't know this to be sure. Traditionally with air guns, that can damage stuff in the gun. It's not the rule. It differs from manufacturer to manufacturer. It can happen. So don't get like uh, impatient towards the end and start dry firing this because it does take a little while to get all the air out of the, uh, out of the system. Been that a couple times. It's normal for this to get really cold when you're depressurizing it. It's normal for this to get really warm when you're pressurizing it. That's just kind of the name of uh, name of the game. Okay, we're about out of air here. So, to reset your regulator down to a minimum so that you can start working up, right? You take your screwdriver. Okay, you insert it in here. Come on. Almost done here, we're just gonna wait. We don't wanna damage it. <laughs> and I start to move that screwdriver clockwise, gently, gently. All right, until it seats. Not hard, just till it touches, all right? Back it out one quarter turn, so counterclockwise one quarter turn, and that is your starting position for your regulator. That'll get you something stupid like 750 PSI or or 800, uh, 800 or so PSI, right? Now, I'm gonna repressurize the tube, and now I can start making upward adjustments on my regulator. Maybe I'll move it to 2700 PSI for a power tune, 1800 for a pro tune, or 1400 for an eco tune, or your own tune, something completely, I would encourage you to try even lower on the tune and all these in between places to see uh, see what you come up with, all right? It's really important to close, <laughs> to close your air bleed screw before you try to fill up the air gun, otherwise you're gonna get nowhere. Don't have to overdo this. It looked like I was cranking on it, I'm not. I'm just putting a little spring tension on that, on that T handle. All right, here we go, let's try again. Go, baby. By the way, I'm not opening this all the way up to 4,000 PSI. I'm kind of stepping it up. Move it up to 2,500-ish. Let the gun catch up to 2,500-ish. Give this little choo-choo. I've been getting this all along as I move through a couple of thousand pounds, and it's been going away. Things are going to hopefully seal back up in there. And there it goes, it's sealed. 300 bucks, guys. It's, um, you know, these are the kind of things that you're gonna experience. You know, it's, it's you, gotta, you gotta understand, guys. <laughs> to, to have a $300 retail piece, there's probably like, you figure, and this is just generally speaking, there's what, 100 bucks in it for the manufacturer, $100 in it for the dealer. You know, and that's not including all of the tariffs we've got coming from Asia, and that's not including freight. So those numbers are probably insanely generous. So while you still get a ton for the 
for the money, you know, you got to be fair with it and manage your expectations with uh, some goofy little stuff you're going to get. All right, so there's, uh, there's all those PSI again. I put about 4,000 in it or so. And where my screwdriver be? All right, there it is. So now, as you can see, my regulator pressure, it's reading zero. By the way, the orange in here, I asked the inventory, I'm like, why is it orange and not a bad area to be in? And, and they said that that's just something the factory did. So doesn't mean that you shouldn't be there. All right, I'm gonna insert my screwdriver and I'm gonna slowly start turning this counterclockwise to move that regulator pressure up. Let's move it up to the 1400 PSI for the EcoTune here. Okay, I'm gonna dry fire it. Okay, that settled into about 1500, so I went a little far, but you guys get the idea, all right? And now I gotta get my hammer spring to the right place, right? And we know that that's what, was it 1.75 turns, whatever it was? 1.5 turns, all right? So in goes my hammer spring. I'm gonna open it up all the way to the left to loosen that str spring as much as I can. I'm gonna get my little silver dot aligned somewhere where it makes sense, straight towards me, keeps it nice and flat. So there's one full turn and there's one and a half turns. And there's your eco tune and it's that easy. Things flatten out, you get a nice flip free platform. All right, so let's say you wanna clean your barrel, which you're gonna need to do. All right, let me make a little bit of room here. All right, how do you get the shroud off to do that? All right, so there is a grub screw right there that needs to be completely removed. And then there is a grub screw on the either side of this barrel band that does not need to be completely removed, but it needs to be backed out. The two grub screws on this barrel band kind of work towards each other underneath the shroud, stabilizing that shroud up against the barrel band. I got my best performance with those in and with this not so floating. I actually tried it with these backed out and it was not as good as with them in and pressing up on, uh, pressing that shroud up on that, uh, on that barrel band. So if I remember, this is a two mil. Uh, yep, okay. Now I put blue Loctite in mine because from the factory they did wander out. Okay, and I don't know how well you can see this. I'm going maybe two turns. Going two turns on those just to back them out to where when I slide this shroud out, they're not tearing up the shroud. Okay, this guy in the back here, this has got to come completely out. This is also a two mil. That little pop you heard was because I put blue Loctite in it because it also loosened itself up. Where my bag be? Okay, and I'm gonna finish backing it out. The little screwdriver guy here. Okay, and that's what it looks like. So we will set you aside. Right. Now the shroud's gonna slide right off. Okay, and it's just an empty shroud. There's nothing to it. You can see on the bottom of it, that's where these two little um, grub screws bite to kind of push the shroud upwards into, a, into this band. So to get an idea, your barrel ends on the shroud. Oops, about right there, all right? And I'm gonna put the picture on the screen. That barrel is not choked, or excuse me, it is choked. It is not crowned, and that doesn't seem to matter. That goes against everything we've learned as gunners. But I'll be interested to see where this goes as we stretch things out to 50 and 100. So now, it's super easy. I can open this guy up, put my safety on, okay? And now I can pull patches through here to clean, clean this barrel. 
Um, if you want to remove the barrel, I think you got to take off this piece of the receiver. I haven't fooled around with it yet. Uh, this piece right here, um, this is just a piece of plastic that acts as kind of like a barrel guide. I will tell you that the screw that is in here, um, it was this was pretty much hogged out from the factory. You know, I don't know how or why, but it was. And uh, so was the one that is in here holding the shroud on. This is poly, this is poly. I share that with you so that you guys are gentle with it on your own and you don't mistakenly hog it, uh, hog it out. Put a little bit of blue Loctite in there and it seemed to give it enough clearance to give it some bite to where I could take a screwdriver like this and just gently lock it back down even though it was fairly hogged and it hasn't moved in like thousands of shots. So, you know, it, uh, it worked for me. Um, but if you were to unscrew this, this piece would just slide right off. The reason I unscrewed it is it was on here kind of canted. I got it pretty straight now. It was kind of like meh over to the side and I'm, I'm a little particular natured so that doesn't work for me. So I wanted to straighten that out. I did not, I put blue masking tape on here so that um, I didn't change where it lived, where it lived on here. And uh, as you can hear, or you're gonna hear, big difference in sound. So this works really, really, really good. Uh, this is uh, this is the zero dB moderator. This here is the piece from uh, the adapter from Don EFL. Uh, this does not come with the gun. This does not come with the gun. These are aftermarket accessories. This is what you get with the gun. It's this nine millimeter plastic cap that sits right in there, and it makes this guy look like a, a cool little double barrel shotgun. All right. So I think guys, we're gonna leave it right there. Um, I mean, what more can be said? Uh, this is a ton of gun for $300. It's a very tunable gun that responds very favorably to tuning inputs. You can get some extraordinary performance out of it as far as your tune and what I'm seeing with accuracy and what I'm seeing with range of power. And, uh, and it's easy. And it's fun to, I had a blast. That's kind of one of the reasons also where I spent so much time with it. It was so much fun just to uh, fiddle with it and tune it and, and watch the success kind of be born through, through the time spent. So uh, if you're new, and I'm gonna say it once again, you'll catch a full review of this gun over on the Airgun Exploration and Advancement channel, my other YouTube channel, AEAC Home where we'll get into some 50 and 100 yard and we'll drill down on some of this other stuff like trigger, sound, refill, and some other fun things. And uh, that'll probably take me a week or two. We got a lot of rain coming in, um, but you know, we'll just work around it uh, best I can. So with that, I hope that wherever you guys are, whatever you're doing, I hope this video brightened your day a little bit. Thank you so much for spending all of this time with me. And I'll see you again over there in a couple of weeks.